hey, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to vibe. That's such an unnecessary change up. Why? We're going to rush the vibe. That's why it's called Rush Vibes. We're also here to <clears throat> vibe. No, we're here to vibes. <laughs> there's the S. All right. Next time I will say, and we're here to <clears throat> vibes. We're here to vibes. Ah, what's going on? Not a lot, but a lot at the same time. Not a lot, but a lot. What's the lot? That's the thing. I don't know. I feel like I'm in a... And I don't actually know what an existential crisis is, but I feel like I'm in an existential what crisis. What crisis are you going through? Um, just because you don't see it doesn't mean I'm not going through a crisis. This is why I asked you, what crisis are you going through? An existential one. So what is it? I don't know. Okay. I guess. Um, look nice. Got your hair did. Mm-hmm. Got it went done to go, last week. Went to go see uh, the world. Or city famous. No, no, she's world famous. World famous, Sala. Up through the DMV. Sala J. She be in these streets. <clears throat> That's what's up. Shout out to Sala. What's new with you? I'm rocking my Wakanda Forever hoodie uh, that uh, a fan sent me. Uh, my biggest fan, actually. Your mama? <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, my biggest fan would be up to date on all the Rush Vibes episodes, and that That's- is... That's not my mama. That's not your mom. No shade, but plenty of it. All the shade, actually. Not. Uh, I'm. I'm toward the end, or, or yeah, toward the end of my two weeks off. Mm-hmm. So, getting ready to uh, start dreading the return back to work. After no, that's why you never leave work, <clears throat> so you don't have to dread the return. No, it's the dread happens when you've been off for like. Longer than a week. I think a week is enough time to be away to really relax, recoup, get done, whatever you need to get done. But when you do two weeks, it's like, do I really want to go back? <laughs> do I just want to find a way to not find, a sugar, find a sugar mama and just start mooching? It's like, don't be me. do I, what is work? And is it really necessary? Probably not. Like if you default on enough loans and you have no bills, like is work necessary yeah i mean you still need to eat you could slum you still need gas this is, look this is charlotte we got plenty of panhandlers out there we do every light i feel like they have to they like fight for seniority of over they probably corner. take shifts you think so like, yo i got i got it from this time because i'll see the uh the exit off of 277 Beatty's ford there's always somebody mm-hmm. at that light but Depending upon the time of day you go, it'd be two, it'd be a different dude. Oh, I wonder if they split, <clears throat> like if they do tip share. They might. Um, not to uh, disparage uh, homeless people. But no, by no means. I'm just curious. You're the one who yeah, said. Well, I'm just saying for me. I, I didn't. Corners. I mean, I think they do. But, um, yeah. So, just sort of kind of getting ready to go back to work next week uh since you won't be here so it'll be it'll be extra tough at mm-hmm. least for the for the first couple of days single dad vibes single dad vibes single dad of three two Actually, not single dad two under solo dad vibes two under the single i ain't got no i ain't got no ring on my finger um single dad of three two under two under the age of three so i'm just i'm just gonna go out to like grocery stores and try to get all the sympathy go out to the mall I'm like, oh my gosh, look at him. What you gonna do? See he's their such mother a, die? He's such a great father. You know how easy, like y'all talk about the bar for dads, like just go out with your kids by mm-hmm. yourself. Oh my God. Just he's be seen such, with he's your child. such a good father. You're just father of the year. I wonder if she ran off. <laughs> I'm like, she did. She ran off to Mexico. And left me with these And left me. Children. Left me with these kids. With no maternal influence. She ain't leave no envelope with money in it. No nothing. She, she went to go find just, herself. She just bounced. Sipping cheap tequila. 
down across First the all, down across the border. I don't sip cheap tequila. You don't know what you sipping. That's true. You know whether it's cheap or not. It's not even real tequila. Yeah. So, so that's coming up. That'll be exciting. Um, you know, I also um take a quick quick aside uh, and just mention that you know our uh, our family, extended family, is going through a uh, a tough time right mm-hmm. now. So. If any uh, Vibe Tribe members, any viewers, listeners out there, uh, if you're the praying type, please do be praying for our family. Uh, if you aren't the praying type, send positive vibes, positive energy. Uh, speak to the universe, whatever people do uh, when they're um, trying to be supportive of, of those in need. Uh, please extend those uh, gestures toward our family because uh, we really need it right now. So I just wanted to to say that. At the beginning, not the end, because you never know if people are actually going to finish the episode. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to, to put that out there. And, uh, yeah. I don't know how you really pivot from such a... <laughs> I mean, they do it on the news all the time. Say, yeah, they I'm do. But normally it's like, it's like one tragic story to, a net, to another, though. No, sometimes mm-hmm. they'll go to, like, something happy. Like, David Muir will hit you with, or, like, Stephanopoulos. He'll be like... 92 seniors were attacked at a mall during a walk. It was fatal. In other news, mortgage mm-hmm. interest rates have dropped. Like it's you just, say that, but that's not good news. That's terrible news. That's mortgage interest rates. Oh, it dropped. They're still high, though. Like, I've been watching. Go from I've 7 to 7% to 6%. That's still and high. It's amazing the pivot of being a journalist. Like, because they don't care. Could you imagine, like, being in a relationship with a journalist and the way they would just deliver bad news? Yeah, they don't, they don't really care. I mean, I mean, I'm sure I'm they sure care, they but they care have somewhat, to, but they really their care. job is to deliver information. So we should have Alan back on and, and ask him how it's like in the news business. Cause you know, you used to have to edit all that like tragic footage and stuff that would mm. come through. Um, yes, but pivoting, how are you, are you excited about your trip? Truthfully, not really. <laughs> Why not? I kind of don't. Uh, this is the first time that and y'all know me i i love to travel i love a stamp in my passport i love having somewhere to go i'm just not i i've never not been in the mood to go on a trip so badly like i just don't i don't feel like it i don't the effort and work packing getting there i i, I just don't i don't really feel like being away and i've feel bad because i felt this way from like the beginning of the trip and i and in the back of my mind i'm like i'll go and probably have a great time but up until now i still i still don't really feel like going i was waiting for you know how like three months ago airlines were canceling flights i was checking emails waiting for a flight cancellation so yeah so we'll so well, hopefully so. the person who invited you on this trip doesn't watch. <laughs> I know she doesn't. That's why. That's why I'm saying that. She's like, probably, this is probably gonna be the want, one episode that she does watch. I don't um, want her little dusty self on my trip and it's anyway. Got nothing to do with her at all. I just don't. I'm. I. I might just not be in the mood to travel right now. There's a lot of. There's a lot of stuff going on. We're there the, is a lot. We're heading my in, mind's in a lot of places. Heading into the holiday season, mm-hmm. and we're heading into the thick of birthday season for us. Yep. You know, we've got got the youngest birthday coming up. Uh, Solace than myself, and then, and then company coming in. Company town. coming in. So it's just it's a lot. This fall is a great sea autumn. I prefer saying autumn is a great season for us. But again, what's wrong with fall? Uh, I had recently seen the definition of autumn, and I preferred the definition of autumn over the the terminology fall. Oh, I thought you were about to say like fall has like racist ties. I, mean, <laughs> I was gonna say does. I can't, I can't, not yet. It's but too think, soon. But autumn Don't is is rooted in Latin and. The Latin translation of autumn, like the reason why we call it fall is because like leaves literally fall. Like that's right. what English people did. So right. it's just not as original. Um, so I mean, it's, it's let me original. See. Let me figure out what autumn means. Oh, I thought you knew. I do. But you're looking it up. So you don't know. I actually like this whole. <laughs> you like the, the computer setup? Yeah. The rush box? So in Latin, it's autumna. And it is defined as the passing of the year. I mean, that could be any season, right? No, because autumn is also harvest time as well. So I guess depending, and then I believe per, I want to say it's the Jewish calendar. uh, This is 
technically their new year. This is mm. so in my mind with the Latin definition, it, it and just how symbolic fall is for us, birthdays, our anniversary, the, when we closed on our house and all of that, it seems like very new my birthday. year. Oh yeah, that too. Um, very new year ish. So I prefer, I'm going to move forward with saying Adam, I, Adam. Adam, who's Adam? Huh? Adam. We need to have a conversation. We can talk about Adam. Huh? We can talk. We can take this offline. A little Freudian slip, huh? You be thinking about Adam, huh? I, mean, I do. Okay. Where does he live? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Adam live in Mexico, huh? Okay. Yeah, you're caught. That's what you are. I'm, I'm you're not. caught. And you ain't got I'm no not. liquor to to excuse it on. That's disrespectful. I sit here at my house. It's my house in, too. My, in my, my name is also on the in my, in my studio. Anyway, we talk about Adam. Anyway, so yeah, so that is in short why I'm not excited. But then there's also like the, what's the word for people who are, I'm not superstitious, but I guess I have to use the word. That's like, Very what if something happens, something bad happens on the trip? And then I'm like, mm-hmm. this whole time I didn't want to go on this trip and now this is why. So, I mean, I've been and praying that I've been praying that nothing bad happens, but hopefully Adam will be able to help you out whenever you I'm sure Adam if, if that comes to pass. Don't call me. I really don't know why I said Adam. I, mean, I, I know why Adam, you, I, know why you Adam. Bro- I know why you said Adam. I know why you said Adam. Why? Enlighten me. Uh so yeah, so there's that. But Okay. At the end of the day, we'll get through it. I'm really just trying to get to November 1st. And I'm usually not I remember I'm of the mindset of not giving a day power, not trying to like get to the end of the week or whatever. But I just, I just want to be in November. I just don't go. I can't. You can't not go. I don't think, I mean, I can, I can get a refund, but short shy of $300. But Mm. I mean, yeah, it's 300, but I'm also like fearful of being like, Hey, (laughs) (laughs) actually not going anymore. So um, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Go to Mexico. Yep. And then uh, shortly after you get back, we're going on my birthday trip, which I don't want to spoil for anybody because I've been spoiled (laughs) by the person who is supposed to be supposed to be planning it. Let's let let's 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 reel this in. So I had I was working so hard. I always loved when people would be surprised like in movies on a trip where it's like, get to the airport. This is where we're going. So for months I have been, you know, putting the coins together, calculating. And I had narrowed down our birthday trip, his birthday trip to a destination. Our birthday trip. It's my my birthday trip. (laughs) It's it's autumn for me. (laughs) Passing of a year. Um, So I narrowed down his birthday trip to one day. I was trying to find places that, I knew people haven't really been going to. It's not very common. So picked one destination. I guess I could say it. I picked St. Martin. So, you know, I'm looking at flights. I'm looking at hotels, resorts, because I knew I wanted all inclusive. I don't mind the hotel, but my thought is if I'm already paying so many thousands to stay at a place, I need my food comped. Doesn't have to be great, but I need it included. So pick St. Martin. I kept a secret. He'd be like, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? And then somehow I think it had dawned on me that David has ambassador elite status with Marriott. I don't need you to put my business on the streets like that. Nah, that's what I do. Now people uh, going to be calling, hey man, give me a room. Give no, me a room, bro. No, no, he can't. People don't do that? No. No. I'm good. So don't start. Um, that's pretty top tier status that he has. So in my mind, I said, well, let me look up and see what all-inclusive resorts Marriott offers. So, you know, I'm Googling. I'm on the Google. And I found some. The Google. The Google. <laughs> and I found some oh, resorts. Google. So I was just like, cool, let's let's do this. So I picked a whole new destination. I didn't tell them. I, you know, did the pricing with flights, the resort. I'm on every, you know, if it's a black travel group, it's a female travel group, if it's a human travel group i'm googling people i'm searching what other people have been what they did while they were there how their experience was i'm excited david's like where are we going where are we going and mind you i'm gonna have to book it under his account because he's the one with status so i'm trying to coordinate all of this i'm i had set myself that this man is not gonna find out where we're going 
he has no clue until I finally book it. So what, two weeks ago I booked, uh, two weeks ago I bought the flights. So then I bought the flights. I was like, all right, I'm going to book the resort. Log into his account. Change the email address so that <laughs> the itinerary and confirmation will come to my email. They still did me shady because they sent you a copy later on. But I'm like, I'm a G at this. I got this. So then I'm like, okay, I need to call the resort and make sure, you know, because he's eligible for upgrades because of his status. So I need to call the resort. And then I also need to plan his actual birthday dinner uh, because I have a vision of what I want his birthday dinner to be at the resort. So call the resort. But our our phone plan, I guess you're allotted a certain amount of international minutes when you're making calls. So I'm on the phone with them. The line's kind of fuzzy. And by the time she finds our reservation, the line disconnects. So I try to call back. So he comes up and I was like, yeah, I'm trying to call them. It wasn't working. So he goes, you know, just add more, you know, add more of the international feature. And I can't remember exactly what I was saying, but I slipped and I go, I guess that's what happens when you call in St. Lucia. <laughs> I didn't even catch myself, y'all. I like if he didn't say anything, I wouldn't have known. So then, of course, he goes. So we're going to St. Lucia, <laughs> y'all. The way my heart burst, I was so heartbroken. I was to, I was this close to getting back on calling American Airlines, canceling the flight, canceling the resort, and finding another destination because I was so set on surprising him. It really, really broke my spirit. Yeah, I felt bad for what it's worth because I, was, I wasn't because I had gotten to the place where you had accepted I wasn't going to tell you. Yeah. And I was like, cool, you know, I'll, I'll be surprised and I'll figure out, you know, when we get to the airport. And when you slip. There was a brief moment where I was like, OK, that's obviously where we're going, but I won't say anything, but I would feel guilty knowing and then try to act surprised. And then if my reaction wasn't strong enough, then she would feel bad. Like, oh, is he not excited about going to St. Lucia? Mm -hmm. Like, did I, did I, did I pick the wrong place? Like, is he not excited about this trip? And I didn't want you to have to deal with that. So I was just like, oh, that's where we're going. So I was, I was hurt. I was doing so well because he had asked me and I'm all about one proving to him I can keep a secret because David can't keep a secret. I really David can't. will be like, you want to know what your, your gift is? And this then, is why I don't plan. And then he'll tell me what the gift is. And I was like, no, you can't get me that. Like, I won't allow it. Whereas if he had just bought it for me, I can't be like, no, you got to take it back. So I was set on being like, I can keep a surprise. So were we talking about it in front of Shay? I can't remember who, who we were talking about in front of. So Salas was just like, so you can't keep a secret. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about yeah. if it's six year olds in general or just our six year old, but she has a way of just finding the wound and sprinkling salt in it. Yeah. And just the way she'll say stuff. It's not like she's intentionally being rude. No, she is. Or I mean she's just She absolutely is she intentionally just has being rude. Such great timing and such just natural responses. I think she gets that from me. It, it the petty, hurts. The pettiness. No, she gets it from both of us. Mm, I think true. we just have different degrees of which we like stab with our petty. No, no argument there. Um, but yeah, she definitely like she hurt my feelings. She was like, so you don't know how to keep a secret. Hmm. And and I couldn't even say anything back because she was right. I was like, I do know how to keep a secret. And Cle she didn't clearly even, not. She didn't even entertain me by saying like what a six year old should say. But like, well, you didn't keep a secret. She just stopped talking. And um. Yeah. So, She's dropped the mic on you. So David knows, which to an extent is somewhat of a relief because I, I, I'm not well at, I, I don't mind keeping a secret, but it's easier to keep a secret from the person, from other people than the person you essentially talk to about everything anyway. So, you know, he knows. So I was like, all right, we're going to watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> so I showed him the resort. I showed it. I was, I gave him like a whole list of itinerary options of things we can do. I'm still going to sprinkle in some surprises uh, here and there, but I'm very excited for his birthday trip. Me too. I'm all in. So I've set. I feel like I've set the birthday bar very high for him. Oh, I'm not going to try to meet anybody's you, bar. You can't. I mean, I could. You can't. But You've had don't, years. Don't, don't do this. You've had years. Your 25th birthday, I took you to the mountains. Your 30th birthday. The one that we we almost didn't get into the cabin? And drove off a cliff, yeah. And drove, almost um, drove off a cliff, yeah. The Your 30th birthday, I threw your surprise party. And now your 35th birthday, taking you to St. Lucia. Like, you can't top that. 
Mm, yeah, I could. You can't. I can't. It's don't not, don't, don't not, do this. It's, it's, don't tell me it's I can't. Not your lane. Don't, don't tell me. It's not your lane. Look, and that's okay. Don't, okay. So what we're not going to do is you're not going to be condescending it's to not, me it's either. Not, it's not your gift. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't like some reverse psychology because I know what you're doing. No, I'm not. Because you know, know, you know, the number one way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do something. Like when it comes to like the birthday chart, that's me. That's me, boo. Okay. That's you think you think that? It's me. Okay. So what's happening? What's going on in the world? I feel like we've talked enough about, and we don't need y'all showing up to St. Lucia. Like you don't need to message and be like, "Can we come?" Like like Stevie Wonder. I don't. Can can we come with you? I don't know nobody. Yeah. Um, well, there were some, there were a couple topics that you wanted to talk about last week that we couldn't get coming up our driveway. There were, a oh, it's FedEx. Um, there were a couple topics that I did. We wanted to get to that we we couldn't get to last week. Yeah. And I feel like at least two of them. Oh yeah. But before we do that, I need to make like a pivot. Sort of a pivot. We need to circle back because, so we talked about Brady and Giselle. And I noticed that from your type, um, there's been a lot of what's, backlash what's, what's towards her men. Um, um, a lot of backlash towards her. Like so I've wanna, seen a lot of posts where people are saying you're divorcing your wife or your husband because he has a job. It was an argument I made. It is an argument you made, mm-hmm. but one, I feel like this shows the caliber of, men who are posting this because just from their avatar i'm like you anyway um have you posted this no but we discussed it we did uh because are you what's my caliber i'm not talking about your caliber <laughs> oh, okay. i said your, your type but it's, what's I my feel, what's my type's I, caliber men like men you're 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 Where were you? your people i just i i was very concerned that that was the response and it lets me know that probably 80% of the men who have that thought or are posting that thought don't are either probably not in successful relationships How you get that or number? don't understand How you get a the number? work that goes into being in a successful marriage. How you get a number because like 80%? Like Where'd you, what stratus? How did you just pull out the stratosphere? I, I, I just make up statistics. I'm really good at making up statistics. Um, Cause I'll be doing something. I'll be like 9.2 out of 10. That's not even anyway. Because, and I don't want to harp on this particular topic long because we have other things and we pretty much dedicated a whole episode to it, but we we got limited time. There's so much that goes into a marriage, not just a relationship, but a marriage itself. And the idea that people are simplifying it to the fact that she wants a divorce or they're pursuing divorce because Allegedly. allegedly, because he has a job when one, I actually thought he was 44. I didn't realize he actually is 45. Mm. So he's hit the promise age. He a whole Obama. (laughs) He hit the promise age. No, wait, Trump's 45. I'm sorry. Or Obama's 44. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He a whole Trump. (laughs) Anyway, he hit the promise age of this is when I told her I was going to retire. Allegedly. And he didn't. Allegedly. Allegedly. All of these allegations. Um, But. I don't know. I, I was just really bothered when I kept seeing people or hearing people say she's leaving him because he has a job. And I, I, I don't think people are really grasping what this all boils down to. What does it boil down to? Just? I th- it boils down to there's there's an issue in their marriage. And from my perspective, it your opinionated truth, my opinionated truth. It's the game of football. It's it's the sport that he's put his whole life into which he has to to be the best at it his career. but it's it's time and according I, to who according to her according to him because if he allegedly said he would retire at 45 and this is circling around a lot i mean people have said it for years so um okay all right a little idiom all right so i'm saying i think that it it just it concerns me that that's what people are, are boiling it down to because and maybe I'm I think I've de- become an empath like I I just really for some reason I'm just really I'm not like gonna cry myself to sleep but I I have a lot of feeling to, emotional feeling towards it sure. and I am I don't know her I'm not going to know her I don't I'm not gonna stand on a soapbox and come to her defense I'm not an attorney in any shape or form but i just i don't like how people are minimizing 
what this is being perceived as because mm. it's coming off as she's a selfish woman who is seeking divorce because her husband has a job mm. and that's not it she stood by his side through most of his the part of his career that she was in she was always at games i mean the kids were at games like she's you'd see when they'd win she'd be down on the field super bowl so it's not like she was just some behind the scenes chick she was there this is the first time i think in their marriage and his career that she hasn't been present at games so i just kind of sympathize for her because you know she probably doesn't care how people perceive her she might but i just don't like i don't think it's fair and i just don't like that that's how and i'm only hearing this from men um that of course she, oh you're leaving him because he has a job because somebody even posted like dude you can't win if she's leaving him because he has a job and it's like no that's not there's so much more to so it's it. an oversimplification it is it is <laughs> it is um and I just don't, I just don't appreciate that. I don't like it. And I think that from a, a, the perspective of someone who's married, I, I can understand being like, okay, like how long are you going to put this job before your marriage? Like you just don't know again, because what goes into being the best, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of being away. That's a lot of missing things. There was, some, there was something that came out today I was reading on Twitter. I don't know if it was TMZ or somebody else, maybe a, a quote that he had given or statement where he said, you know, he he's had to sacrifice like more than half of his, I don't know if his, his life during his career or like so much of his time mm -hmm. goes into football. Yeah. That, you know, he can't see his face had to sacrifice time with his family in order to have the kind of career that he's had so i think it kind of underscores what you're saying mm -hmm. and i don't know how accurate it is because i've seen it different places but i haven't actually seen it come from i guess they lost to the maybe it was the pittsburgh pittsburgh steelers mm -hmm. on sunday mm -hmm. and i've seen t one clip where he was essentially like losing it on his teammates yep. but i've seen a post where they quoted that he said i didn't i'm like not divorcing my wife to yeah lose i feel to the like Steelers. i feel like I was, i've never i haven't I seen the verbiage so i, I saw, don't know that it's true i saw that one i feel like that was somebody making that up okay because yeah. i was like dang he really put that out there like that yeah. but um but then i was also like how are you gonna come for the Steelers like that like is it are they that bad of a team that to lose to them is that big of an insult? Apparently so. You know I me. Mean? I'm not, you know, I don't so, want to yeah. follow the league. But, um, so I, it's funny because I wanted to, uh, I'd hoped that we would, we would circle back, circle the lot, circle back on the lot. Um, because I wanted to say <laughs> that uh, I was probably in my assessment of the allegations um, in, the situ in the situation of, of him and her that rest on top of those allegations. Um, I may have been, may have been a bit unfair uh, in my in my assessment of the situation. Now, to be fair, I did say I could see if these things are true, if a covenant was mm -hmm. broken, um, I could see how she would react that way. Um, but I also made the argument that even if that's the case, you kind of have to understand uh, the magnitude uh, of Tom Brady in his career like the goat quarterback i think is undisputed like he's the goat so of course he's going to have a hard time um turning off mm -hmm. the the will and the want to play the game or understanding that his ability to perform doesn't meet any longer it doesn't meet the urge to play anymore like when he was in his mid-30s sort of like yeah i'm toward the end of my career but i can still perform at the same level of the want that I have to play the game. And it's just not the case anymore. He's 45. Mm -hmm. um, so even though I said I could see uh, Giselle, Giselle, mm -hmm. Giselle, Giselle, Giselle side, um, I still kind of, kind of made the argument that, you know, what's one more year and stuff like that. And that was a bit unfair because you don't really know what the situation is. Mm -hmm. And that's the trouble. You, it, that's kind of the issue I have with discussing something that, we don't really have concrete facts yeah. about yet. Um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, I had kind of thought about it. <clears throat> I was like, yeah, that was probably a little bit unfair. So it was actually very interesting that you had said you've seen online that uh, a bunch of people had come to, to his defense and was calling her selfish. So 
I feel really convicted now that I'm being lumped in yeah. with the dusty 80% of <laughs> men who have blindly uh, defended Tom Brady with 85% with, with, of men. With, that was 85. Who, how did it go up from 80 to 85? Oh. In like 10 80, minutes that we've been talking. 2.5% of men who posted that Giselle. So, was, but we need to understand something like, I, I keep saying this. The majority of men, majority of people are not on Twitter. That is a very small minority. They're mm-hmm. vocal. Mm-hmm. They're loud. Yeah. They're rambunctious. Yeah. But they're not a majority. So the 80% of men that you've seen on Twitter are probably like 10% of all actual men who have a thought or opinion on the matter is what I'll say. But okay. You know, it's, it's unfortunate, though, at the I end did, of the day. It's I just an unfortunate. Just want, I wanted us to, to put that out there because I just don't, I don't, I think there's more to it than just he has a job so. and she is well, divorcing him for that. Because if sure. that was the case, she'd have left him, what, 10 years ago, five years ago? And checks and checks rolling in. Hard to walk, I mean, especially we, if you left your career, it's hard to walk away from them checks. Yeah. But then we could talk about how people are saying that her leaving him now is the best thing that she could do for him because I guess he's got like a billion dollar deal or he's got a really, is I think alleged that he has a really significant broadcasting deal uh, waiting for him when he, uh, when he decides and, to hang it up, she won't get half. So, but I feel like that also shows that it's not about the money. Like she, whatever reason she's leaving it, it has nothing to do with monetary value. Allegedly. Allegedly. Anyway. So, so what, else, what we got? else do we have? We got the football guy from uh, yeah. from so Georgia, and then we got Tia and, and Corey. I couldn't remember. And I mean, I feel like Tia and Corey are no longer relevant. They were just kind of like five-minute news. And I meant to go and watch their Black Love segment. Oh, they were on that, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, I wanted to go watch their yeah. Black Love segment and see um, what they said. Were they, are they irreconcilable irreconcil- irreconcil- differences? differences? Mm-hmm. Is that their? Okay. Yeah, she, she filed for divorce you know, it's like, and blindsided um, him. It's like uh, sports. Like when uh, someone has to get an MRI because they got hurt, like the MRI is always negative. X-rays are always negative. <laughs> like I've never heard like there ever being a positive uh, MRI or X-ray. That's kind of like divorce. Anytime somebody gets divorced, it's like always irre- irreconcilable differences. Mm-hmm. It's never like he don't take he don't take he don't take he don't take showers or, or nothing. That's just well maybe I mean, maybe that that's falls the, under oh, okay yeah I guess I guess it is yeah. It's just a blanket, it's a very, very blanket, a blanket divorce term. Yeah, it's wide, yeah they're wide ranging. Their divorce, but their divorce seems very peaceful. Um, they did say that you know, rumor had it she she blindsided him. He didn't see it coming. And divorce ain't got to be messy. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, so there's that. I mean, ten years. I think I would, they're fourteen I would, years married. Somebody's ten. Who's ten? That's is it? Tom and. Um. Um, for 14 years, I mean, 14 years, it's hard mm-hmm. to go that long and not be, um, it would be weird to see someone be at that length of time together and get a divorce and it'd be like, just all out messy. Like, I, like, yeah, cause you would, well, you would, people can be married longer and have pretty ugly divorces too. Yeah. So I think it just depends on where you are in your marriage when you're getting a divorce that determines how it's going to be. And then what type of people you are. Yeah. Like, that's another thing, but that's, too um, bad. that's it. I don't really feel like digging too deep into their theirs because they've been very private about it, which I respect. So um, I had initially written um, football guy from Georgia, football guy from Georgia running for Senate because I couldn't remember his name. Um, and honestly, I didn't want to remember his name. I probably could have Googled football guy from Georgia running for Senate and yeah, I would have gotten, come up. I would've would've gotten come an answer. Come I didn't want to because I, I and I'm not going to say his name. If David wants to say his name, he can't. So, I mean, what's but wrong with saying? I just don't. It's Herschel you know, Walker. You know that, you know, what was that thing as a kid? If you stand in the mirror and you say, what, like Bloody Mary, like six Bloody times Mandy, or, or three times. I thought it was Candyman. Oh, maybe or one of the, I think it's both. It's okay that somebody shows up. I feel like if I if I say his name, if his name it's actually gonna walk in the studio, exits his mouth, my mouth is. And at the time, he had just gotten into it was just the abortion issue, but b- between then and now, there has been more. It's like an infomercial. It's like, but wait, there is more. Yeah. So, um, 
football guy from Georgia who's running for Senate. His name is Herschel Walker. All right? okay, thank you. Say his name. I'm not saying his name. Um, he. His mama so, named him Herschel. So let's just let's just stop. I don't know what it is about this particular autumn where these miscellaneous black men are coming out and and bringing attention what to other, themselves. What other black men is? Um. Oh. <laughs> I'm just not saying names. I'm not going to say oh, names yeah. anymore because yeah, right. I'm not here to entertain it. You're right. But mis- these miscellaneous black men with platforms keep doing stuff and, no, and they just saying keep, stuff. They keep being themselves. And, and just making, they're not even, fortunately, I think we're at a time where when one black person does something, it, it doesn't blanket all black people as badly because remember back in the day, they'd be like, oh, there was a robbery. And it's like, don't be black, don't be black. Uh, and then when they weren't black, you're like, whew. Um, I, think, I think we're in a safe space right now, at least for those two gentlemen, where they're not affecting the entire population of, of, of the black race in America. But football guy in Georgia running for Senate is, I, it's like... I have so many feelings and thoughts because I'm torn when it comes to the fact that he's running for Senate and I'm not even confident he can spell Senate or Senator. Jessica. Um, I don't even know where he came from. So I know. Georgia. <laughs> I know. I mean, I know he's like, like a, a former football player, retired football player, allegedly just was super great. I, yeah, he was, he was. I think we talked about the fact I don't, I know more basketball history than I do football history. Mm. So I don't know his, I didn't know his name outside of the context of like the last three months. I feel like I'd never heard his name. And then all of a sudden I'm hearing his name every single day. And it's driving me crazy because I, I, I don't understand who said this person should run for Senate. And I, I mean, know he's got the Trump endorsement. Well, I mean, he's got. I mean, he's got the state of Georgia. Ever the state of Georgia loved him when he was playing football. So, so he played football in Georgia. Yeah, they at, went to Georgia. I mean, he went to the University of Georgia, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he played pro as well. Yeah. For what team? I don't. don't I cool. Because I actually, actually, after I asked, I realized I don't. I don't want to yeah, know me, more about him than I do. So, I've heard so many different things. You know, he had this whole abortion scandal he's like anti-abortion to the highest level but wrote a check to one of his girlfriends for the cost of what an abortion would be sent a get well soon card which we can unpack that later and to the point where now his son his son has turned on him where he was just like i'm tired of the lies he's got a background in where he has what pulled a gun on on i think it was his one of his son's moms um so you know domestic violence Yet, this is the person the Republican Party has decided to stand behind in Georgia. And I think what really pushed me over the edge that I wrote this down as a topic to converse about is the simple fact that some lady said she would stand behind him if he aborted bald eagles babies. And I was just like. It's a very wild statement to make. Yes, but that that was a statement that was made okay. that they would stand with him if he had done that. So two things. One, I don't actually think Republicans are anti-abortion because they can justify one Republican. Huh? <clears throat> no, I think the don't. whole party, because if people are still <clears throat> supporting him and standing behind him, knowing, I mean, we have plenty of evidence that he has had that he participated in funding this woman's abortion. I believe he's denied it. He, he said he, he remembers giving her a $700 check, but doesn't know what it was for. So why do you send a get well soon card? Why, why do you I tell mean, someone to get well soon after you send them $700? There's plenty of different things you could The card go, you send them is like, you owe me. There's plenty of things you could go through that someone would need to send nah, you a get well card. Nah. Mm-mm. Not someone like him. So nah. uh, you, don't, you, only, you only heard of him three months ago. Not like What do you mean like someone him. like He's him? He's not someone I feel is at the intellectual caliber to just miscellaneously send get well soon cards. And you know how I know? Because if you, if someone has an abortion, 
I don't think you're supposed to send a get well soon card. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe a girlfriend to girlfriend. Like if I know a girlfriend did, I'd send her a card. But I don't think you specifically as the male who insisted she get it, you're supposed to send a get well soon card. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. So I'm just, I'm just in this place where I don't understand. I don't understand politics. And yet here we are. I don't understand discussing politics. The American Republican Party. And I don't understand how they can continuously rally and unite around what seems to be the worst potential option to represent any seat in office. So this takes me back. I think I said it in season one where I said, I think the parameters of entry into politics are too low. I think people need to take some kind of certification course. Now it can be a free course because you still want to have everyone have access to it, but you need to be able to take a certification course and pass an exam before you can run for office and there needs to be courses at every single level you want to run for mayor here's the mayoral um, course this is the certificate you need to get because if we don't create some kind of standard some kind of barrier to entry for fools we are going to continue to have fools running for positions that are supposed to be responsible for the well-being of American citizens. So this is a problem. You think this problem started with Herschel Walker? I think I think he's a result of the problem. He's a, Bec- sim- he's a symptom he of is. the illness. Okay. Because if we didn't have a barrier to entry, he wouldn't have sat one day and said, I can run for senator of the state of Georgia, of the good state of Georgia, because apparently every state is the good state when they're mm. being referenced. Of course. If he knew that there was a certification exam, a class and an exam he had to take before he could run for Senate. And I'm talking about layers. Like you have to take you have to take the certification from the mayor level all the way up. City council, take the certification. I don't think he would have had the confidence to say I'm going to run because this is a man who thinks he's a sheriff <laughs> and he's not a sheriff. He's got, he's got the honorary badge though. So it's real. Badge is real. It's you can have an honorary doctorate that don't make you a doctor. <laughs> they call Cosby Dr. Uh, Bill Cosby, didn't they? Didn't they have a doctor? Oh, Am I confusing? Yeah, maybe somebody's got an honorary doctorate, and they call them doctor. I mean, you're a doctor, but like you're not you're not going to perform surgery. You're not a doctor, doctor. Right. So I, I'm I'm just just, I'm just in a troubled place, and honestly, I will never go to Atlanta again. Oh, stop it! If you people stop it, don't pull a Stacey Abrams, stop, and get yourself to the polls. And make sure that this person who has the audacity to run against the reverend who is currently (laughs) presiding over Dr. Martin Luther King's church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I will be so done with the state of Georgia. Like. I will never eat another peach. I will like what else is Georgia known for? Uh, do they have a special barbecue out of Georgia? I don't know. I will I will go out like if I have to book a flight on Delta and it's connecting in Georgia. If you book I a flight will, on Delta, you're going to connect. In then I will book with another airline. I will pay an extra two hundred dollars to avoid Georgia because I just it's it's insulting. To Raphael, I'm gonna say it like that. That this is this is his opponent. It's absolutely insulting. I think he had said something uh, that he's insulted. No, I, no not Raphael. Uh, uh, Herschel had said something to the <sighs> tune of because uh, insulin prices are are really high, uh, and I think he said something like, <laughs> "I don't have the exact quote because I saw it in passing, but." Something like get in better shape or eat better. <laughs> you won't need it. I mean, which 
technically <laughs> it's, it's true it's tone deaf uh it's it's a bad it's a bad quote um but you know it's like trump said with with uh with covid you stop testing <laughs> <laughs> your numbers won't keep you know going what? up i can't even laugh because I, you, I i actually i don't agree with him on a lot of things i'm just saying that was a factual statement if you he stopped made. well then i mean that's kind of the that's same the thing only, with the insulin like if you if you're in better shape trump you eat better you and you don't like have 94 percent of the things that exit trump's mouth I don't agree with, but when he said, yeah, "Stop testing, stop testing," and you <laughs> won't get negative results, I mean, he wasn't wrong. He was not wrong. So sure. I mean, that I just, I feel like we're in a time, and it's so. I I always feel stupid. I always don't appreciate when people say this because you only live in one time. So when people are like, "Oh, this is in history," blah blah blah, but it's like, well, I'm sure in you know. 1910 there was something happening that people were like oh my gosh in history i can't believe something like this could happen so it's like this just happens to be the generation that we're in the 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 window of time that we're living in so it seems like so much i mean recency recency bias yeah so i don't want to say some I, i don't like saying something along the lines of oh my gosh like nothing like this has ever happened in history i'm sure idiots have like run for political positions over the course of history uh but it just seems like we are in a time where people are so foolish and it's overwhelming and it's annoying you know what's overwhelming right now is the fact that our youngest child is screaming her life away screaming like you would think shay is assaulting her she's assaulting our kids do a lot um they do a lot but yeah so i I won't say his name. <laughs> I refuse to say his name. You know how, I don't know if you, you watched The View while Trump was president. Whoopi, I think she got a Guinness World Record for not, I think she only said Trump's name once. In that's his, a rec- there's a Guinness Record for that? In his entire presidency while referencing him. That's, like, would, a, that's like an ESPN stat. Just call, be making stuff up. She would always call him you know who. So she might have gotten a world record or someone might have said she should get a world record. I think she slipped one time and said Trump, but she always said, you know who? That guy, I almost said his name. That guy is my you know who. Herschel, I'm, not, Herschel I'm Walker. not saying his name. Yeah, and the legit- only time I'll say that name is if I'm referencing The Walking Dead, which took place in Georgia. Y'all, it's the end of times. And that Herschel was a man. I miss Herschel. Shout out to the actor who played Herschel. Yeah. Um, are you, are you, you got it all out? I think so. Okay. Give you a chance I, was, to. I was just hoping I might get to speak before we finish. Yeah. Um, maybe this is what you feel like when I have my, when I have my, uh, tangents. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe surprisingly, I don't have a whole lot to add because that was a lot, It was. but a couple of things a couple. for perspective context. Mm-hmm. Number one, um, you only have, if you're a party, you usually only have one. When you get to this stage, you only have one candidate that you can support, right? Uh, and politics today are at such a place where it's so partisan mm-hmm. that most people are going to go with the candidate that has their their party's name, uh, their letter next to their to their name. So when you get to that place, you're not going to agree with your candidate on every single you know position that they have. But you feel their their cumulative position as a candidate uh, is is what either what you uh, most agree with, or you're just gonna rock with them because they're Republican or they're a Democrat. Because there's Democrats candidates who you know who Democrats wouldn't agree with every single position they have, but they're gonna support them because they're a Democrat. So that's kind of that's kind of that. And then Republicans traditionally have always just fallen in line, right? Like the party embraced Trump. Um, they're going to embrace more than more than likely they're going to embrace any candidate who is a Republican running for any office. That's just that's just what they do. Whereas Democrats, you see more infighting. Republicans, they're like, all right, I may not like this dude, but he's a Republican and he's got a X percent chance of winning. So we're going to push funding to him. We're going to we're going to support him. We're going to endorse him. 
unless in the Trump era, you don't, you say something negative about Trump and then he comes out and he'll support anyone else who's, who's running. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, that's, that's kind of, I, I don't think it's, it's exclusively a, a Republican, um, uh, thing. I think it's, it's just kind of the way politics are, but it would seem if you were to compare the two parties, Republicans are more likely just to support whatever candidates running just because they just tend to like just fall in line and they'll, they figure they'll sort everything else out. Any differences, internal differences out later. So there's that. Uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, he's concerning, uh, to put it mildly as, as a candidate. Um, he's concerning and I, and as I think a human being, <laughs> the personal stuff is, is alarming, but I mean, everybody's got baggage. Everybody got skeletons. Everybody, I mean, it's, it's true. You ever held a gun up to someone's head? No, but actually, it's a lie. Excuse me. Yes, I held a gun up to you. You've held a gun up to me. Oh, Nerf gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, like pew. to the baby, pew, she was, pew. He was just. <laughs> pew. I wanted to see what if she would trust me or not. She doesn't know what a Nerf gun yeah, is. She didn't. She didn't move. She trusts me. Cause she doesn't know what a Nerf she gun was is. Like, Ooh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm scared there for a minute. I was like, man, did I black out? <laughs> sometimes I was, I go on a rampage and just not remember. Yeah, sometimes you do. Um, I mean, everybody's got, everybody's got skeletons. Oh, yeah. But so, some skeletons have more bones than others. Some are bigger than others, uh, for, for sure. And some are more concerning and speak more to someone's character than others. But the fact of the matter is most people have baggage. Um, and because any, any person who comes out and is, announces their candidacy and they're on a big enough platform, usually people are going to go digging and they find something yeah so uh, there's you know we're all imperfect imperfect uh people creatures whatever but it it's concerning it'll be interesting to see what happens in a couple of weeks and people go to the go to the polls and do we need anything from georgia we should probably go get it now <laughs> <laughs> georgia never... is is probably one of the more uh critical it is. um states this this term um or this this cycle with you, know, you got Stacey Abrams running in for for governor, and then you've got Warnock running against Herschel Walker. And I think if if I think if Herschel wins in Georgia, or excuse me, if Raphael wins in Georgia, and somebody else wins, holds on to a seat, some another person holds on to a seat, there's like a it's like a really high percentage chance that Democrats hold and even increase their uh, their majority hold in the Senate. Mm-hmm. So it's a, you know, it's a really crucial time. I said a few, few episodes ago, I don't think there's going to be this huge red wave that a lot of people are, are talking about or expecting. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think after Kansas, um, yeah, I mean that, that was definitely like a, a eye opener. Um, but I just think it's not, I mean, the Republicans may still, you know, they may come out, with a, a majority in the house, a slim majority, or they may take a majority back in the Senate, but I don't think it's going to be like a total wipeout either. Mm-hmm. It's going to be but, interesting. I, I do wonder if this is supposed to be like a black on black play. Like, cause last time the one, I can't remember her name who ran against, um, Warnock. She, she had done something like, or said something controversial, no, wasn't she an owner of the women's basketball team? And she didn't, there was, she wasn't, was she Warner or was she? Yeah. Us? Okay. Yeah. yeah you're right. She, I can't remember what they didn't allow the female basketball teams to do. Maybe it was protesting or wearing jerseys that supported George Floyd, something, so she much had, history. Yeah, she had said something, but, that um, route of she didn't up. stand a chance. So I'm wondering if they're like, Hey, we're going to bring this black, former football player from Georgia to run for Senate against this reputable reverend. Uh, if they think that's like equaling the playing field, cause it seems like we've gotten to a point where we're just trying to put bodies in position, whether they're qualified or not qualified. Now from a biblical standpoint, I know the Bible says God qualifies the unqualified, but from a political standpoint, if you're not qualified, you're just not qualified. And we need to accept this, okay. which is why we need a barrier to entry for people to run for politics. You need to get a certification. Again, it can be free, available at your local community college, but you need to have some kind of education because some of y'all, y'all ain't it. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I, I won't. I won't spar with you on we this need one. A revolution. I won't spar with you on this one. Revolution. Um, I'll let you. We'll let that. We let need, let that be it. We need a revolution. Anything else? <sighs> you heard Nicki Minaj was mad that she didn't get um, nominated. I think it was for the American Music Award as a rap for one of her songs, "Super Freaky," which is kind of an uncomfortable song for me. But like she. Yeah, it just it's just weird because mm. it's like um, I think it meshes Super Freak, mm. but it's just weird. Again, I've never been a big Nicki fan, so I'm kind of just like whatever. You get down with the barbs. I'm not not in any way, shape, or form. But um, she, I guess she, I don't know what it is about, and I'm not really into the feuds of male rappers except for you know that one podcast I listened to where things got dicey. Um, <laughs> Y'all, one thing, I might not be current, but if you put something in podcast or documentary form, I will absorb all the necessary knowledge. So I think we talked about this, but I listened to, it was, oh, what was it called? I can't remember, but it was a Biggie and Tupac podcast. Y'all, it was one of the best podcasts I'd ever listened to. I was so excited. I was like, David, did you know this? Did you know this? And then I hit him with the line. I was like, so this is where it gets dicey. Y'all, it was, it was ridiculous. But I guess, I don't know why it seems like, and maybe because there aren't a lot of female rappers who get to a certain level, but this whole, like, you need to respect me. You need to, you know, bow down, blah, blah, blah. But apparently that's been going on with her and not Doja Cat. Is it Lotto? I don't know. There are so many people. I just don't even know who's who anymore. Uh, but she was trying to say that somebody's song got nominated as a rap song, but hers got nominated as a pop song and she didn't want to be categorized as a pop singer. I don't know because she was rapping the whole time. This is a random fact. But Megan the Stallion. So she was on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. and she has this song i think it's anxiety she looked beautiful she performed it but she was like holding back tears like she started like crying and people were saying that just i'm sure just being anxious but apparently while she was on snl her house in california was being robbed mm -hmm. like they had broken into her house so mm -hmm. i don't know if that's why she was crying but i did find that um i really just wanted to plug in like the how do you, you segue from Nikki to megs i just wanted to like show that i'm relevant are you? Because you sound like you know exactly what. Her house got robbed. What else must talking about with Nikki? Like you don't know what she's beefing with and stuff. Like oh, that. I don't. I also don't care. Um, but yeah, Meg got robbed for like three hundred thousand dollars. I did see that. That's like that's sad. It is. It's unfortunate. Yeah. So she's probably gonna take a hiatus. But that's it. Okay, that was, that was the definition of a quick hitter right there. I was not. I uh, was not expecting that. Bam, bam. Pew pew. Um. I told myself I wasn't gonna do this, but um, your boy mm -mm. Kanye West was uh on Drink Champs Sunday, and uh, it was publicized because um, Kanye had done a string of interviews. Mm -hmm. Uh, within the, the, the preceding week, they talk with Carlson, although they allegedly edited out um, either what were or were perceived to have been anti-Semitic content uh, comments. And then he, he uh, went on the shop, which is LeBron's show podcast. And uh, the shop put out a statement. Maverick Carter, LeBron's business partner, put out a statement that uh, they weren't going to air it mm -hmm. due to. Uh, comments that Kanye had made. So he went on Drink Champs. Because of the fact that his interview wasn't aired with them. Uh, I would, I, th I imagine Nori was like, hey, we're not going to edit anything. We're going to put it out. Come to Drink Champs. And I, apparently, they're, you know, they have a relationship. Um, now, for anyone who's not familiar with Drink Champs, it's, uh, it's a podcast hosted by Nori. And uh, they drink. And they have they have guests on the pop pop culture figures, people in the culture. They come on. Not a real big political ish type uh, platform. Um, they just you know do have a conversation, getting drunk, and then talking about whatever 
whatever comes comes to. So uh, it was it was kind of hyped before. Um, and then a, a section of the interview, which is actually three hours long in its entirety, but a 45 minute version of it had. I don't know if it leaked or somebody got a hold of it, put it out uh, beforehand. So this came out. I think people started talking about it. Clips started being uh, pushed out online. I think Saturday night. Um, I went and watched the 45 minute version Sunday. And then I guess Sunday is when that full interview dropped. And um, I was like, damn, because I was really hoping it was just a 45 minute because I don't want to put in another you know, two hours worth of work and watching it. But, uh, came out and, you know, Kanye was making a lot of the same comments that he's, that he's been making, um, about, you know, Jewish media and, um, Jews are in charge of or in power of everything. And, um, he made some comments about Kim, uh, and the, and the Kardashians and how he's, you know, been painted in negative light and, um, made a comment about Drake allegedly sleeping with Chris Jenner, which was just wild. I thought Drake slept with Kim. Not my space. <laughs> um, I hope that's not true. But uh, he was just being Kanye, right? Now, Nori was saying, hey, guys, you when people were started reacting, obviously, because people were like, you know, why would you give him a platform? Like, blah, 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 blah. Nori said, wait until you watch the full interview because I push back on a lot of Kanye stuff. So the White Lives Matter t-shirt part came up and uh, this was posted from Nori as a, a part of the interview where he pushed back. Now, it's later in the interview, the full interview. So it's probably like at two and a half hours as opposed to within the first 45 minutes, which is what most people saw. Most people's attention span would allow them to watch. Um, and he he was serious, I guess, then was trying to make some argument that when you wear the black life, the white lives matter shirt, it takes things away from white people. And it was more of a, of a statement instead of asking him, why did you do this? And do you not understand uh, the ramifications of it and why people were upset with you about it? So it came off. It wasn't, didn't come off as, as pushback at all. So um, Monday morning, Yesterday, Nori goes on an apology tour. Now, that, now during Sunday, he was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. My interview with Kanye got more views than football and blah, 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 blah. But the Sunday, the tune was different. He went on The Breakfast Club. He went on a number of, of shows and was basically saying, you know, I believe in free speech. Uh, but at the same time, I don't agree with anti-Semitism, obviously, and some of the comments that Kanye was making. He said, we're not a political show and blah, blah, blah. Sort of kind of giving excuses and people were challenging us. And Kanye's kind of showed us who he is. Mm -hmm. So why would you give him that space to, exactly. to speak in the first place, which Tenori didn't really answer. I think he, he tried, um, but they were friends and basically said the Kanye I know is different than the public Kanye. So I wanted the Kanye I know to come on and, and speak. And again, he believes in free speech. So where it came out this morning, late yesterday that um, revolt TV, which is, uh, I guess owns Drink Champs or who who distributes drink, drink Champs before it goes on YouTube, which is Diddy's Love, whatever he goes by, Diddy's Network Revolt TV. Um, took it down. Mm -hmm. Took the interview down. Took the whole thing. And uh, shortly after that, news broke that Kanye was buying Parlor, which is the uh, the right wing. Um, social media platform that is supposed to be all about free speech. Uh, CEO of which is Candace Owens' husband. <laughs> and so... Uh, oh, can I just chime in? No. You know I almost worked for Parler? No. When I was doing my um, yeah, moderation. That's disgusting. that's disgusting. I didn't know what it was. They were just like, uh, uh, when they advertised it, they said, must be willing to um, respond and moderate for a like free thought social media. And so I was like, Oh cool. And then I realized what it was. I was like, nah, I'd get, I good on, good on you. Um, dang. no, I'm serious. Good on you. It's just the way you kind of like, Oh, I'm trying you. to, cause the cameras can only run for, but for so long. Why didn't you pause them? 
because then I would have had to refocus them and it's it's too much. Okay. Sorry, I had to work. Yeah, whatever. You're the one who wants a sugar mama. This is true. Matter of fact, <laughs> if you need to make another call, go right ahead. I'll, I'll wait for another 20 minutes. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, Word dropped that he was buying parlor. Buying parlor. Um, so now this is tw- Trump has his Elon's buying Twitter. Oh, they're not the same. No. Truth Social and Parler, two totally different okay. companies. And now Elon has Twitter. So they're about is to Elon, have the He's who knows what Elon is. But I heard um, that he's like a super villain. But uh I almost forgot the most inflammatory one of the more inflammatory or probably the most inflammatory comment Kanye made during his Drink Champs interview was saying that uh fentanyl or uh-uh. implying that fentanyl is what killed Floyd oh, and, yeah. and that the officer's neck and knee wasn't really on his neck. Um, which I think was probably the most egregious comment from the uh, from the interview, or at least the part that I saw. Uh, it actually just came out today that um, George Floyd's mother is suing Kanye for two hundred fifty million dollars, as she should. So, um, I think I had a whole point that I was going to make, but I honestly don't. I don't remember it now. But that's um, what happened with uh, with with Kanye. Okay. So here's my thoughts on Nick. You've got, you've got five minutes. Really? That's it. Why? Because I need to end the recording before the cameras overheat. Dang. Um, you should just pause them. Uh, so, cause I also will not say his name. So rapper from Chicago, I think one, I think we just need to stop talking to him. I think everyone. I that, said this. That's why I'm not. I agree with you. This I said is me this. agreeing with you. We need to stop talking to him. We need to stop talking about him. We need to just forget about him for a little bit. Like we need to take a break. When we need to, we all need a break from the rapper from Chicago. Free thinker from Chicago. No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> His thought is in bondage. I I I told you that I heard a conspiracy that he is really just doing all of this inflammatory stuff so that Adidas disassociates themselves from him so that he doesn't have to pay the cost of dissolving the contract for the clothing brand that he has created and partnered with them. I don't know if that's fact. I I, I personally think he's extremist enough that this is has absolutely nothing to do with it. I I believe earlier you had asked me before we were recording my thoughts on the fact that they took it down Mm -hmm. and I don't, again, I don't think anyone should talk to him to begin with. Like there shouldn't be any conversation with him. Uh, I get that Nori thinks he knows Kanye. Darn it. Rapper from Chicago. Take a shot. On this, <laughs> on this deep level that he wants to, you know, portray to the world. No, like, it's not, you're not a savior. It's not, it's not your job to save him. He is making his bed and he's sleeping in it and he's clearly comfortable in it. He He's enjoying where he is right now. So I don't think it's anyone's job to keep giving him platforms. Like, even, you know, uh, the shop having him on and then choosing not to air it. I don't even think it was necessary. Like all of these shows, I think Cuomo had him on. I was watching a clip this morning and he accused Cuomo of cutting him off. So then he hit him with like, la la la, like a four year old trying, like, I can't hear you. Wait, what? <laughs> so he was talking. Who was talking? The rapper from Chicago okay. was talking to Cuomo. Yeah. I guess he was in a car driving. Uh, and he kept saying, why do you keep cutting me off? Why do you like, And Chris was like, you've already said what you need to say. Now, I don't know if this is an old clip, a current clip, but I just know that the rapper from Chicago ended up going like, essentially like, la, 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 can't hear you. Like, that's, that's, that's it. Um, This is not a man we need to entertain. This is no longer like, I don't even think this is like a mental, I don't think it's a mental health crisis anymore. This is just someone we don't need to entertain. He's an outlier. He's doing the most. He's doing too much. I feel for his kids, uh, but I'm done. I, I, this, and I saw someone post that you just, people are still using the excuse of his, the defense of his mother's death. May she rest in peace. I believe it's been almost a decade, if not a decade since um, Donda West passed away. And people were saying, 
he can't use that as an excuse anymore. And as unsympathetic as that may sound, I'm having to agree with these people because unfortunately like death is a part of life and you know he's not an isolated individual who he's the only person whose mother has died and he's had to come to terms and and cope with it there i i recognize the the how difficult that can be but if people are still using that as a defense for why he is behaving irrationally saying irrational things the I, I personally can't stand as that's that's justification for behaving in this manner. Um, I, I get it. I know like in a season, like immediately following, you know, you've got this, I believe it's seven stages of grief. People go through things. And yes, you'll have obviously, you know, if you lose someone of significance, you're not just going to wake up one day and, you know, forget them. But, you know, that's part of the healing process. Unfortunately, um, you'll heal. You'll still have pain. You'll miss them and all of that. But you can't use that as continuous justification, especially when you're in a situation when you can get help. If it's someone you need to talk to, a therapist, a counselor. I mean, he knows enough people. I mean, call Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is always willing to help and listen to somebody. But that's my one stance on that but i just you know you want to own us a right wing it's been five minutes okay you want to we're gonna go to the cameras go off so y'all buy if uh, buy in advance if the cameras go off um if you want to own a right wing social media okay good riddance own a right wing social media i don't think i don't think they should have taken it down because the thing with the internet once it's up somebody somebody has so, it the four yeah. i'm sure that i didn't watch it i refuse to give any more of my life's time outside of this podcast which is supposed to talk about current affairs to this rapper from chicago so i'm not gonna I, i'm not i didn't watch the 45 minute i had no interest in watching it um i knew he had said something about george floyd's death until you just said it i didn't know the details of it uh so i didn't know what his his stance was but he's become inflammatory he's doing too much he's toxic and i don't entertain toxicity and it's i don't entertain a lot of toxicity i have i have a margin of to toxicity and once i hit that metrics and trust me, there's someone who has taken up most of that metrics. So I have no, I have no more space for toxicity. Uh, the allocation is, is filled. Uh, but I just, I think they should have left it up. I think they, they posted it because it would get views. And, you know, to this whole, I'm going to do something wrong and then go around and apologize. It gets old because, you know, you were boasting about getting more viewers than football. You know what you were doing. You knew what you were doing. And then you're over here making it seem like the full video exonerates you from, you know, the things he said. And it didn't like, no offense. I mean, I don't really even think I know a Nori song. No, I know the one song he was featured on with, I think it was Lumi D. Um, back when I used to listen to reggaeton a ton. That's the only reason why I know who Nori is. And it took me a minute to like, it's like, is this the same Nori that they call out on the song? Um, but they knew what they were doing. They, they they knew what they were doing. So I hold, and I'm actually surprised that Puff Love Diddy, Sean Combs from New York, even allowed them to air it. Because, I mean, just from the text thread that was shared, like, we know he's not in his right mind. Stop giving him places to speak. It's like the football guy from Georgia running for Senate. Like, stop giving them opportunities to speak. Agreed. A um, couple of thoughts. One, <clears throat> um, I don't, I don't think it's fair to uh, to say it's been one. I don't know that Kanye uses uh, his mother's death as as a reason for for why he is the way he is. I think that's more of a easies like his following people thing. Uh, but even if even if he did or did, whether he does or doesn't, um, I don't think that it's fair. Um, to say that it's been 10 years so it shouldn't that's not something that you should say still affects you to this day because we don't know the depths of their relationship how tight it was you watched the documentary mm, well i didn't say it didn't if i said well, the, uh, i said there it but there's you, but, healing but you know I'll, you there's no there's no to say it's been 10 years this is an arbitrary number 
Like, who's to say that you should be healed by 10 years? We don't know. Because it seems like from everything I know, I don't know. I'm not a Kanye West historian, but it seems like they were all each other had. Um, and to lose her in the, the way that he did, I, I could see how it could affect him for the rest of his life. So it's not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's fair. I know how I feel about my mother Mm -hmm. and I know if I lost my mother at all, let alone tragically, that it would take me a very long time to get over it and it would affect me for a very long time. I don't know if it would be 10 years. I don't know. It might be 10, 15. I I don't know. But, um, you know, tragedy, 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 grief, mourning. uh, These are very serious symptoms to deal with and they can affect a human any human Mm -hmm. a a multitude of different ways for any multitude length of time um so i I don't know that i I don't think that it's fair to say that you can't use that because it's been 10 years because 10 years as a number it doesn't it doesn't it's it's a relatively speaking it's a long time depending upon what you're comparing it to but but if say God forbid, but you brought up the example that wouldn't, would you say that that would justify you being, cause that would be, cause to an extent that would be like, Oh, this person's, you know, parent died or grandmother died. And that's why they started beating their wife because they were so frustrated. Like that's not a justification. You can't, yes, that's grief that you're dealing with. That's not how you deal with that grief. There are ways of which you deal with grief because You know, a lot of people will say, oh, this person was beaten. I've heard people say why Jeffrey Dahmer was the way he was. But that's not just because it's unfortunate if you were neglected as a kid or or, or stuff like that. But that's not justification as to why you should behave in a negative way. I mean, we do it with the kids. You know, sometimes a kid will be mad and because they're mad, they might lash out and push another kid. Like Savi was upset the other week about something and she pushed the note. And I was like, Oh no, because just because you're, you're going through something, let's work out what you're going through. Don't lash out and take it on somebody else. Granted, they're small children, but that's like, you nip that in the bud now because socially human to human interaction, it's not proper to take out your what you're dealing with on someone else. Let me ask you something. When Savi pushed Sonoma, what did you do? No, 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 not physically, with, uh, but the act of what you did, what did you do? I called her and I told her, I said, Savi, you don't you do You gave her you instruction. Yeah. You, have, you helped her manage mm-hmm. that emotion so that the next time she finds herself in that place, she, she knows doesn't. how to better handle it. Maybe Kanye just needs help. Maybe so, he's Maybe he's gotten it, maybe he hasn't, but... Maybe it's so a matter does of that him. mean the responsibility is on his circle. Like I know a lot of people were there was a time where he was doing stuff when he was still married to Kim and people were putting the blame on her. Like this is why you have to marry the right. I would see posts like this is why you need to marry the right person, because if you marry the right, the wrong person, they don't hold you accountable. Um, and people were upset because they were saying this is what you do when a man acts out. You put uh, the responsibility on the woman like, in his uh, life. Uh, so I'm asking. I'm less concerned about whose responsibility it was. And I don't want to delve into this could a, circle back to why nori had him on like how you were saying the kanye he knows is different than what he's putting out to the world so maybe he does have people who are helping him and he's just unhelpable maybe maybe he doesn't that's not a word sorry maybe he doesn't maybe he does maybe he does i'm just simply saying maybe he needs help and hasn't received it and in the way in which he needs it um so but that's part of my point in terms of saying he could still be affected. Absolutely. He's affected. And that could be a reason why he's been acting the way he has. Although how he's acting could be subjective, could be sub- like to say it's been toxic and it's been negative and it's bad could be a sub- subjective thing to say, because there may be people out there who don't necessarily see anything wrong with Kanye, with what Kanye's been doing. They may just think that he's finally speaking his mind, speaking his truth. And you and I may say, oh, that's toxic, that's negative, that's 
that's bad. It's a bad example for him to be as a father, as, as, as a husband or ex-husband or whatever. But somebody else may say, oh, I think he's just saying what's what's on his mind, mm-hmm. what's on his heart. And here in this country, we have the ability and the freedom, constitutional right to do that. You don't necessarily have freedom for, from, you know, have protection from um, uh, in a in a in the private sector and a public in the eye of uh, the public, a public court um, from ramifications from what you say. But. He's just doing what he's allowed to do. He's not beating nobody. Although you could make the argument that he was harassing Kim. And I could, I could see that. Oh, he was definitely Um, harassing her. So I'm just saying, I don't know. My original point, I don't know that it's fair to say that he, he, we, he can't say that someone can't say he's still affected and justified. Well, not justified, but he's still affected. The reason he's acting how he is is because he's still grieving Mm -hmm. for his mother's death because it's been 10 years that's what i took exception with you know the other stuff is which i can i can i can lean into but you know my my beef and i'll say that this is my last piece on on kanye um and then we can wrap or if you have something to say we can we can keep going um it's always interesting how when people have there are certain there are these people these figures who have like a dedicated legion of fans like we talked about the lizzo's the swifties the bay, the bay hive, the barbs, um, Kanye kind of falls into this category where he's got people who will pretty much defend him regardless. The hotties, Meg the stallion. Oh, hotties. Yes. Thank you. Um, but because Kanye is self-described free thinker, right. Um, and the way in which he communicates it's, it's in circles. Like you'll ask Kanye a direct question and he'll start to answer it. And then he'll kind of like go like this and talk about two or three other things. And then he'll come back. Whether those two or, two or three other things are essential to the initial question, who knows? But eventually he'll make his way back. And I think that that kind of along with him just being, you know, just being direct uh, and saying things like, oh, the Jews control the media and things like that. That's kind of helped his this aura that he's of, of that he, that he kind of walks in, that he's a free thinker. And so that can kind of, <laughs> he kind of gets the label as being deep. So a lot of times you'd be online and you'll see a clip of Kanye where he's really he's either like in the middle of making his circle, his way back to the original point, or he's just, just spout, just spewing. Right. And so you'll always see this comment or a series of comments underneath what he's saying, where somebody would be like, yo, what is he talking about? And somebody will come behind and be like, yo, <laughs> oh, no. if you really think, you know what I'm saying? If you was deep, you really understand what he's saying. But y'all, y'all too shallow minded. Y'all don't, y'all don't have that deep thought. You know, that ability to deep think. You got a low vibration mindset. And then somebody will be like, oh, well, what's he saying? And they'll be like, well, you got to do your own research. Like, <laughs> it's not my job to teach you. Just say you don't know. <laughs> Like, you don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Hell, Kanye he might not even know, know what, what he's, he's talking, talking about. about. I, I can't stand these just idiots. Not idiots. That's a strong word. But these people online who who get on and they wax poetically about how Kanye is such a deep thinker and that yo, if you was if you was really, if you really listen, if you're listening, you understand what he's saying. But you ain't you ain't you ain't you ain't, you ain't got the ability. Like, bro, you ain't deep. You ain't philosophical. It's like, you don't know what he's saying. And it's okay. You just want to agree with him because he's Kanye. Mm-hmm. And you might feel sorry for him. You you know, he dropped some really fire albums back in the day. Donda was nice. I like Donda. I still play Donda. But, you know, this whole free thinker thing, like, just because you say something that fires a lot of people up and seems contrarian doesn't necessarily make you a, a free thinker. That just makes you... Contrary, mm-hmm. and this, or someone who has a platform that when you say your thought, a lot of people haven't heard. I, I yeah. feel like there are lots of thoughts that people have, but you know yeah. they're at the and, corner store. And so. you can make the argument that he's not necessarily saying anything original. It's just talking points from mm-hmm. from certain from certain groups, and he's just parroting it. So that's just my thing. Like I, that that is humorous, and I see that online a lot. I mean, I'm going to say something super controversial. People are going to get upset with me, but do I it. really think he should just shut up and rap. Get him. Somebody get him a beat. 
him get yourself a beat and rap like so the thoughts and opinions <laughs> expressed no expressed by jessica belong to her and her herself okay they're not indicative of the greater views of us here and rush vibes not me not my babies but they're jessica's opinions okay i stand by my opinions and the reason why i say this because i know the whole like shut up and dribble thing and People were just kind of like, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. I think, and I'm not saying I, I, LeBron should stay in his, in sh- shut up and dribble. I'm just using that as an example because that's where I'm foundationing this, is so, this, is so this, this statement. This is so dangerous. I think Kanye, dang it, the rapper Take from Chicago, <laughs> the rapper from Chicago, um, his true gift and where he gets his depth is when he's doing something musically there has been no instance in the last year that he has said something that I've been like, whoa, that blew me away. But maybe that's because you've already, you've already decided. No, I'm just saying in in, in his career, in his work, like I watched the documentary and I, like I, I, I was part of the people who watched it before it got on Netflix. Um, okay, well, no, no, calm, calm down. In this room. Calm I down. I was in this room. My desk was right here. Calm down. And I, I got to preview it. And I was, ask David, I was blown away by his talent. And I think sometimes people are talented, but it's only in one space. So maybe people. And I think, I think his talent is musical. So someone could, I, someone could say maybe we shouldn't be having a podcast. Someone you know, could say that. Heck, I've said it. Wait, what? I have. No, we're about to wrap this thing. This is the last episode of Rush Because, Vibes. I mean. We're not doing it no more. But it's more so on the, from the perspective of like, who are we to have a podcast? We're having a podcast because we can. Who is he to talk? He talks because he can. Exactly. But I think his true talent, his true gift is music. I don't think anybody would disagree with it. So I think he's trying to, I don't want to say disassociate himself, but I think sometimes like moms who raise their kids, their whole life is about their kids and they don't do anything for themselves. So now they're pigeonholed because they don't know who they are without their kids being associated to them. I think he might be in a situation where he wants to be more than the Chicago rapper. He wants to be seen as capable, intelligent enough to be a political person. He wants to be a business mogul. And that might not be his strength. That might not be his skill. And I think in an attempt to branch out he's trying too hard and he's trying to be deep because he i have listened to some lyrics and some of his and his lyrics i would be like wow that really set with me but when he he tries to use that same sphere in just regular conversation words it doesn't it doesn't do it and i think a lot of times when he is having an interview, he gets like real big hype. Like anytime someone opposes him. And I really think it could just be a matter of, he doesn't necessarily have the substance to emotional intelligence, the emotional intelligence to, to really be who he wants to perceive himself to be. And instead of like studying or learning or just accepting, like my gift is to drop knowledge with music He's doing all this other stuff and it's it's not being received the way his music gets received. And I don't, I don't know if I articulated that right, but or the way I wanted it to come out, but I think that's where he is. I think he wants to be more than just um a rapper, I'm a producer. I want I want to be a mogul. I want to be a renaissance man. And you know, not everyone is a renaissance man. Not everyone is a renaissance woman. Some people are given gifts and it's one gift and it's your responsibility to to polish and prune that one gift to make it the best that it can be. Stop trying to grab other gifts. Those aren't for you. So that's that's where I stand. That's me dropping my mic. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Rush Vibes for this week. Um, we promise... We're going to do our best not to talk about 
the rapper from Chicago next we're week. Talk about the sorry, what from... two, three weeks straight? I think we've been yeah, talking about. We're gonna talk about the rapper from Chicago. Um, he's, he's currently. Thank you. I, I, in my spirit, I can feel him doing something controversial. Thank you to the uh, I think seven seven new YouTube subscribers that we've gained over the last couple of weeks. So uh, we appreciate the vibe trap growing. Um, you taking the time out to click the little subscribe button, go into you, our YouTube page. Uh, and, and clicking to get notified whenever we uh, post a new video. So make sure your notifications are on so that you do get notified when these new episodes drop, usually on Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays. Um, oh, and we apologize for not getting that. We said we were going to drop an episode last Friday on our Wednesday episode. We had every intention to. We had some uh, technical difficulties um, that I'm still not quite over. Oh yeah, we did. Um, so we we weren't able to uh, to record. to record, but we're back. Uh, no two episodes this week, but maybe we should record tomorrow for next week. Maybe I was I was thinking getting in touch with what's her face and see if she's available tomorrow night okay. to see if we could record. Yeah, I said what's her face. So, um, but if not, yeah, we'll probably need to record something for. Her. Oh, but then you get back on Tuesday, so we can just record Tuesday night. Yeah, you gonna put it out Wednesday. I have to edit it yeah, Okay, no. Yeah, I know. So I can do one. I can do a Zoom. No, your audio, your audio is going to sound horrible. We can try it though, if you want. You want to try it? Let's record one, and then we can do a backup one. I mean, we'll just take the week off if you're not. Okay. If you're out of pocket, we that's fine. It. We've done. We took two weeks off, un, unbeknownst to anyone. We just didn't post. Um, oh, excuse me, y'all. Not me yawning in. A- <laughs> With a cup of coffee. It's horrible. And it's the middle of the day, too. Like it's, it is. I'd be tired. It's, it's the middle of the day. So, yeah, uh, be sure to um, like us in, uh, in, in, on. <laughs> I meant to say subscribe, but I already said that because I said thank you to everybody who subscribed. <laughs> like a skipping so. track. Like a. <laughs> you miss yelling. It's your. <laughs> you want to do this? Like us. Yeah. On Dang. Facebook, share with a friend. If you haven't subscribed and you missed it when he said it earlier, subscribe. Sure, 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 listen sure. to us on TuneIn, Apple Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Yeah, we on Google. Google Podcasts. Yeah. Did I already say TuneIn? TuneIn. Yeah. See, it ain't um, that easy, is it? But I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the husband. I'm the fa- the husband of your children. I'm the father of your children. Don't disrespect me like this. Oh, but yeah. Thanks. Thank you for uh, the new tribe members. Uh, please respond back. Give us some feedback. I, I I have been checking the comments. I do appreciate the comments. Um, start to say, let's the conversation go. So we'll be back. Hopefully not having to talk about the football player from Georgia and the rapper from Chicago. Oh, and thank you to the 13 people who have uh rated us on apple podcast oh yay yeah i just i check i don't, I don't I, admittedly i don't check very often but um you know i check apple won't let me rate it oh really like it keeps saying i need to make a new nickname <laughs> i was like wh- why why do i need a nickname to rate a podcast um but yeah I, I checked the other day and it said we had 13 ratings so appreciate you and they're all five stars yeah so it's all probably family members but nonetheless okay. we, we appreciate it we'll take it appreciate you we're here for nepotism yeah absolutely um so yes, uh, do we want to make any announcements about your what you got coming up for this creatively speaking, or do we want to just announce it when we have no, something? Let's just drop when okay. we have some, when we have tangibles. Okay. Well, that's all I got. We'll be back next week, and uh, yeah, we'll catch y'all then. So stay vibing, yo. We out. Yeah. Peace. Done with some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now Can't stop me now Yeah, I done